hello lovelies, in this video we're going to look at how to revise practicals for your GCSE and A level sciences. So this is general advice that covers GCSE, A level, biology, chemistry and physics because we have learned lots over the past few years from the examiners, from what people did well and what people didn't do well in last year's exams. Now the key thing, the really really important thing for you to remember is that the practicals you see in the exam are not going to be 100% identical to the practicals that you've done in class. The exam boards came out and told us this right from the very beginning. The exam boards all said that if you just learn the method word for word, if you just learn what you've done in class word for word, you will not be able to answer the exam questions because what they are doing are testing your exam skills, not whether you can remember exactly what you did in class. What they want you to do is to take what you've done in class and apply it to a new situation. So last year in my predicted papers, either photosynthesis practical was the one that was going to come up. And I wrote a question in my predicted papers saying that I thought the variable was going to be the wavelength of light. So not the intensity of light, which is what you've probably done in class, but they'll be changing the wavelength of light. I received so much abuse. Because people told me I was stupid and people told me I was wrong. People told me I was a massive mistake because that's not the practical they've done in class. In class, they've done the intensity of light. And then the exam came round and I was right. In the exam, the variable that they changed was light and they changed the colour of light. Now, colour of light, wavelength of light, tomato, tomato, scone, scone, they are the same thing, just written in a slightly different way. So all of those people that told me that I was wrong didn't do as well in the exam because they were just looking at the intensity of light. Whereas if they had actually listened to me and looked at my predicted paper and taken what I'd said seriously, they would have done better in their exams. So the first thing I want you to pay attention to is the skills, not just the exact details of what you're doing. There is no point downloading the handbook from the exam board and learning it word for word because you will not get enough marks. Now, one of the things that really frustrated me is when I bought out my practical books, I got this all for review on Amazon, basically saying that, that they could have saved money by downloading the practical handbook from the AQA website. Yes, 100%, you could have done that because that's free, but that will not help you get marks in the exams. The other thing you need to pay attention to for practicals in the exams is why did you do stuff? Why did you measure it with this? Why did you do stuff? One of the really key practicals that this comes up in is specific heat capacity, where you have a block of metal and you put the thermometer in the block. Now the practical instructions will tell you to fill that hole with a little bit of water, with a little bit of oil. And that's kind of all it says about it. But why are you doing that? You need to know the why for every single step in the practicals because they could ask it to you in an exam. Now, the reason why is if you just have your metal block for specific capacity and you put your thermometer in, the between the block and the thermometer, there's going to be air. And air is a great insulator. What you want is something that will conduct, so oil is great for this, that will conduct the, the temperature from the block to the thermometer so you get a more accurate reading. However, it doesn't say that in the practical instructions that you will download from the exam board website. You need to think about it. So you need to really pay attention to all of the things that you're doing and why. Now, when we come to do the results analysis, you need to be able to draw a graph. This is science, not maths, and we do things differently in science. I know it'd be lovely if we did the same thing, the same in every single subject, but we don't. And there are two very important things that we do differently in science compared to maths. In maths, lines are straight. In science, lines of best fits can be curved. So if you see points that are curved, draw a curved line through it. Every single year, a large percentage of students will just get a ruler, plonk at the page and draw a straight line when it should be a curved line. The other thing that you really need to pay attention to are results tables. If you're asked to work out the mean from a results table, in maths you'll just add all the numbers up and then divide them by the number of numbers. In science, if you get asked this in an exam, 95% of the time, because I'm sure it must have happened like once ever. Anyway, this sort of question comes up every single year. If you see this come up, what they are asking you to do is to find and discard the anomalous results. But they haven't explicitly said that in the instruction. All they said is find the mean, and then they expect you to know that you have to find and discard the anomalous result. This is a key science skill. So what I want you to do for every single practical is look at the practical and think, 
could, what are the variables that I can change? What are the things I can change? What can I change that I'm changing or controlling? What are the things that I'm changing that I can measure? If I've measured a number of bubbles, could I measure pH? Could I measure concentration? Could I measure volume? Could I measure time? How long it takes for this volume to be reached? I want you to think about that. I want you to think about why. Now, if it asks you about fair test in year seven, a year seven would say, repeat it three times and find the average. That is not what it's asking anymore. It's asking about the control variables. So what have you controlled? How have you controlled it? How has this made a difference? And then we need to be thinking about risk assessment. So what could hurt you? How could it hurt you? How can we stop it hurting you? And sensible things like wear goggles, clear up soils, these are all really good things. That is how we do the practical things in science. There are lots of things for you to pay attention to. So taking the practical that you know and you've done hopefully in class and applying it to new situations, looking at why you've done everything, looking at what variables we can change and what variables we control and our risk assessments. And then don't forget, I've written you loads of books on this. You and me, we can do this together. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.